Vinland Saga is a series that I've had issues with in the past, and despite me thinking it's some of the most overrated shit ever, I was still able to acknowledge the good in the series and give it a C-. Vinland Saga Season 1 was just an okay series that was heavily carried by one character in the second half of the season, that one character being Askeladd. The first half of Vinland Saga Season 1 was pretty much mindless action with shallow characters behind a generic ass viking plot, with the revenge quest Side story that was just as interesting as watching a three-year-old trying to tie his shoelaces. The second half of season one, on the other hand, was a lot more interesting due to Askeladd's character having a lot more focus, which led to some of the most iconic moments in Vinland Saga season one. Askeladd having Ragnar killed to force Prince Canute to develop as a character, Askeladd killing his own men, Askeladd killing Borns and the King, Askeladd's final battle with Thorfinn that led to his background being fleshed out. You, you get the point. So what made me like the second half of season one was the depth of Askeladd's character and the amount of impact he had on the story, and what made me hate the first half of season one was the lack of depth with Thorfinn and the other characters. Now there are some other things I hate about season one, but the lack of depth with the characters was one of the major things that made me dislike Vinland Saga. So when going into season two, I was told by the salty ass Vinland Saga fanboys that season two of the series was going to focus more on characterization than action, which got me interested in giving the series another try. And to my surprise, the fanboys were right. Season 2 of Vinland Saga actually does a better job with their characters than they did in Season 1, which is why I think Season 2 overall is better than Season 1 by a slight margin. Because despite Vinland Saga doing a better job with their characters in season two, there are still some issues I have with season two. One of those issues being the same issue I had in season one, that being Thorfinn's character. Now, despite Thorfinn developing as a character, he still comes off as a very bland person. Like, don't get me wrong, Thorfinn recognizing his flaws as a character back in season one and improving on them is really dope in one of the best moments in season two, but once you get past all of that and actually watch Thorfinn's character from an entertainment standpoint, he's really fucking boring. Like, the nigga is pretty much a walking bible that says random shit that sounds good, but logically makes no fucking sense. Like, for instance, I have no enemies. Like, are you fucking serious? The fuck are you talking about? You're saying this shit while being a slave and getting punched in your face a hundred times, while also having the ear halfway cut off. And yeah, the people who did these things the Thorfinn did end up respecting him later, but that doesn't take away the fact that you can have enemies even if you don't want people to be your enemy. There's even cases where people can hate you and you don't even know who the fuck that person is. Avoiding enemies is impossible. Even if you resolve your beefs, a new one is inevitably going to come, which is why I think Thorfinn saying he has no enemies is ignorant, because even Thorfinn has to be aware that regardless of how peaceful he is as a person, that's not going to stop people from wanting to fuck with you. Thorfinn could have just said that term in a different way and it would have been a lot more tolerable. But no, he wanted to come off as a pretentious goody two-shoe. Here's another one of Thorfinn's dumbass quotes. There's no point if you fight for peace. You'll never escape from that bloodthirsty hell that way. <laughs> Dude, what the fuck are you talking about? The rights and laws we have today that led to some of the peace that we have in the world today is because of the people that put their blood, sweat, and tears into the wars and protests that we had. Throughout his History, whether people were colonizing lands or fighting for equal rights, violence was the one constant that remained in all those sequences most of the time. That's not to say that Thorfinn was wrong when he said that disputes could easily be solved without violence, because he's right. A lot of bullshit throughout history could have been solved if people were to put their egos to the side and handle a serious matter in a more mature way. But that's the thing, you're pretty much asking people not to be humans because ego is what makes people human. Most people operate and make decisions off emotions because humans are emotional creatures. So expecting someone to handle things in the way that you see fit is you somewhat enforcing your will onto them, which a lot of people can see as egotistical. It's also wishful thinking and unrealistic to handle every dispute in a peaceful manner. The world runs off of violence. It's a hellish place. It's not meant to be perfect. Thorfinn talking about building or finding a utopia is a perfect example of wishful thinking. Shit sounds good, but logically makes no fucking sense. Oh, you think that's all the stupid shit Thorfinn says in this 
show? Check this quote out. Why do I have to be afraid to die? Are you living because you don't want to die? Is there anything good that comes from being alive? I can't think of anything. <laughs> There's also a moment in the story where Thorfinn contradicts himself when he says that he's not going to use violence to solve his problems, to only then use violence to solve his problems when Snake was coming over to fold his ass up like a lawn chair, which proves my point that Thorfinn just be saying shit just to sound good. But ultimately, Thorfinn's character isn't all that bad. He's way better now compared to season one when he was just a one dimensional character looking for revenge. I just have an issue with him trying to be the second coming of Gandhi and having the personality of a newborn baby that's experienced life for the first time. Like this motherfucker Thorfinn really asked Anar if it was possible for people to change. <laughs> like what the fuck? Small fish. Ugh, this shit's so fucking boring. Right. <laughs> hey Anar, I'm why sorry. is our show so goddamn boring? <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know, Thorfinn. You Maybe because we're planting grass and shit. <laughs> I just wonder, can people really change? Wait, motherfucker. How can you say can people change? Nigga, you came from being a nice kid to an emo teenager. So by that logic, why can't you come from being an emo teenager to a nice adult? Like, what the fuck? But let's move on from Thorfinn and talk about the pros and cons of season two, as well as the other characters. Now, when it comes to the pros of Vinland Saga season two, one of the things I liked was the balance between action and storytelling. Season one was way more action oriented, which is why a lot of people liked it more than season two. Me personally, I like a story that focuses on storytelling and its characters, as well as giving me some action here and there. And Vinland Saga season two gives me that in a well balanced way. Now there is a con that comes with this pro because even though I think season two gave me a good balance of action, storytelling, and characterization, I do feel like they did a horrible job with the pacing that made the show feel dragged out and boring a lot of times. Like even when it came to Thorfinn's progression as a character, I thought it felt really slow. It took nine episodes for Thorfinn to realize he was a terrible character in season one. It shouldn't take Thorfinn this long to come to this realization as a character, especially when in the earlier episodes of Vinland Saga season two, it's motherfuckers doing boring shit like planting grass and cutting down trees and shit. Like the episodes just feel unnecessarily padded. Hey, hey, nigga, you wanna grow some grass? <laughs> grow some grass? Yeah, nigga, grow some grass. Come on, man, we got 24 episodes. We can we can go over there and make some pumpkins and shit. <laughs> You can grow some apples and some sunflowers and shit. <laughs> Vanland Saga season two definitely should have been shorter around 12 to 15 episodes instead of 24 because decreasing the amount of episodes I think would drastically help with the pacing and it would allow the show to get straight to the point with shit. And let me go ahead and address this now before anyone says anything about letting the show marinate. Look, I don't care about the show marinating or focusing on side characters or whatever. Just be quick with it. Be precise. Like, let's not waste too much time on irrelevant bullshit. Now, another thing I really liked about Vinland Saga Season 2 was the inclusion of Askeladd and King Swain in the roles they play with Thorfinn and Prince Canute. Their characters play the contrast and influential role to Thorfinn and Prince Canute and how they reflect on the actions of those characters. Thorfinn and Canute would face a problem or do something very questionable and Askeladd and King Swain would show up in a dream or hallucination and check them on their actions. They're kind of like insert characters for people like me who like to criticize characters for saying or doing dumb shit in the TV show. It's a really dope sequence whenever it happens. I think this is also a good time to mention episode 9, the episode in which the ghost of Askeladd comes in to help Thorfinn confront his past as a shallow warrior and help Thorfinn take the right step towards becoming a better person. That episode is easily easily the best episode in the entire fucking season. The shit was just beautiful, man. And it's a perfect example on why I love the inclusion of Askeladd and King Swain in season two so much. Now, I'm not gonna lie, that's about all the praise I can give Vinland Saga season two because everything else I'm gonna say afterwards, it's, it's just gonna be me ripping the show to fucking shreds. I'm just gonna be honest with you. But let me go ahead and get this out the way now so people won't ask me in the comment section. I don't take animation into account when judging a series. I judge a series based on its writing, not its pretty colors or 
frames. Now, with that out the way, let's get into the issues I have with Vinland Saga Season 2. The first issue I have with Vinland Saga Season 2 is its story. It's boring as fuck. You add the shitty pacing that drags the living shit out of the show and what you will have is a 10 hour spectacle that would knock you the fuck out. Like there is no sleeping remedy out there that could fuck with Vinland Saga season two. That shit was so fucking boring that I had to keep watching multiple episodes twice because I kept falling asleep. And to be honest, I could have hooked a car battery up to my nut sacks and my ass still would have went to sleep after watching this boring ass show. The only time shit was interesting is when it was focusing on King Canoe. Also, episode 9 is a great moment, and even the moments with Snake are really dope. But besides that, the rest of the season is just a tiresome journey. I think a lot of it has to do with the storytelling being supremely basic and predictable. Like, the story pretty much boils down to Thorfinn realizing he was a fuckhead and wanting to change into a better person, and King Canute becoming a monstrous king that he once hated in his father. Those storylines aren't bad, but it's how Vinland Saga handles them that make me roll my eyes and shit and fucking cringe. The storylines are handled in a very preachy, cookie cutter way where Thorfinn is supposed to be the good guy that makes all the bad guys reflect on their actions by preaching to them as if he's working for Jehovah's Witness or some shit, and then the villains come to the conclusion, huh, this guy is something special, isn't he? Because he just so happens to take and miss damage and fight like a fucking Naruto character on top of all of his basic ass preaching skills. And this just goes to show just how shallow most of Vinland Saga's characters are, because if you're not getting significant screen time, then you're pretty much forced into two roles. A, the innocent villager who gets enslaved, raped, or killed, or B, the Ooga Booga Viking that only thinks about killing and becoming a true warrior. Even when it came to King Canute and his story of becoming the king of all nations, they handled that shit in the most shonen jump way possible, where Canute was once a good guy that had good intentions when becoming the king, to a guy that's now becoming a shitty person because the need for more power power and control, which leads him to want to do something fucked up, but then completely reneging on that plan because he met the main character that talked no jutsu to him, which led to him going back to his older self where he's now a good king that wants world peace. Like the shit was so fucking corny. And what made King Canute's storyline so fucking stupid was that he was 100% in the right when talking to Thorfinn about using force to get the peace that he wanted, because that's the reality of things. To get what you want, you have to use force a lot of times, especially when it comes to colonizing lands and enforcing laws as a king. But no, he ignores this reality that he's already coming to conclusion with to go back to being the nice king that tries to do things in a good way when he's already been shown that that's not an effective way to get what you want when facing other kings. I mean, it even got to a point where Canute was laughing at Thorfinn for doing the corny peace treaty shit where Thorfinn said he would run away if he saw Canute and his army coming. Like Canute knows Thorfinn's way of thinking is flawed. <laughs> Ain't this some bullshit? Motherfucker got talk no juice and said, yeah, fuck the farm, guys. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I've never been challenged this much in a peace talk before. Nigga, Thorfinn didn't do shit but tell you to leave the farm. Anar was the one that challenged you, dumbass. King Canute had the same mindset as Thorfinn at one point, and he was the perfect counter to Thorfinn's character as he was the person that got to see the results of trying to handle things in a peaceful way. But he ultimately buckled down because, oh my god, look at you, Thorfinn. You changed so much. Pretty much he let Thorfinn slide because he was the main character and they had history together. Because if this was any other character doing that same corny shit that Thorfinn did, Canute and his army would have put 10 toes deep in that character's ass for that farm. So when you actually think about it, Thorfinn's speech didn't really mean or do shit to make Canute change his mind. Thorfinn and King Canute's argument was the battle between realism and wishful thinking, and wishful thinking ended up winning, which is why I think the ending of King Canute's storyline was fucking garbage. People like to praise Vinland Saga for its realism and deep themes, not even realizing that Vinland Saga is more more shonen jump than it is sane when it comes to content and theme exploration. You can get more realism and better theme exploration from a shonen series like Hunter x Hunter or Naruto before you get it in Vinland Saga. And those shonen series are way more entertaining than Vinland Saga. The overall story in Vinland Saga season two was just boring, preachy, pretentious bullshit. And because of the epic music in the background and the close up shots of the character's serious face whenever they give a basic ass one 
one-liner, people think the series is deeper than what it actually is. As for the characters, most of them fucking suck. Yes, the characters this season get a lot more focus compared to season one's characters, but that doesn't mean the characters this season are good. Besides Snake, Kettle, Askelag, King Swain, and Swerve Kale, the rest of the characters are either boring as hell, annoying as hell, shallow as hell, stupid as hell, or uninteresting as hell. Thorfinn, you guys already know how I feel about him. I addressed this character earlier in the video. He's bland as hell just like his father. Anar is easily one of the most annoying characters in the show. Yeah, he played a role in helping Thorfinn develop and I found that to be really dope, but other than that, dude is just an emotional bitch. Like seriously, this guy does not know how to read a room to save his life. This motherfucker will risk everything just because my feelings got hurt or he felt like he got treated unfairly. Like he's not wrong in feeling the way he feels because he's right. A lot of unfair bullshit has happened to him in the series. He was actually kicking Canoe's ass in the discussion when Canoe was trying to take over the farm, calling Canoe out on a lot of his bullshit. My only thing with Anar is why act super emotional and flip the fuck out on someone treating you wrong when you know you can get fucked up or killed for it. You're a slave, my dude. Not only that, he's in the best situation possible while being a slave. Kettle told him and Thorfinn that they could work for their freedom. Anar fucking up someone for treating him wrong will literally ruin his chances of freedom, something he clearly wants. Especially considering that his stupid ass is the reason why he's a slave in the first place. If his ass would have just listened to his mom and ran off with his sister while their farm was getting raided, then they could have got away and he wouldn't have been a slave and his sister wouldn't have died. But overall, Anar is annoying as hell and every time he was on screen, I was like, fuck. He has good moments, but his constant bitching and his inability to read a situation makes him a trash character for me. Thorgil is just a shallow character that kicks ass. He's pretty much the Thor Kale of this season. He had this one dope ass moment though where he did some Metal Gear Solid shit and was lurking through the water and caught King Canute lacking. He should have killed Canute ass right there, but because of bullshit plot armor, Thorgil was robbed of a kill in a big moment. Canute should have lost an arm, an eye, or something because that plan that Thorgil had was way too clean for him not to be rewarded in some way. But overall, Thorgil is pretty much a one dimensional character that serves as the entertainment for the series. When it comes to Omar, he is easily the worst character with significant screen time in the series. Why the Arthur felt like he had to flesh out this loser ass character is beyond me. His development wasn't even earned. The motherfucker only developed after realizing that his idiocy is the reason why his father is going to war with Canute for his farm. And yeah, Canute set him and Kettle up, but it was because of Omar's insecurities as a warrior that Omar took the bait in the first place place. Had Omar just chilled out after embarrassing himself in front of Canute, Kettle would have never even had to fight for his farm. And what makes Omar's character even shittier is how he tries to become something that he knows he's not built for. When it was time to kill people for real in the war for the farm, homie ain't want no smoke. Bitches get no respect for me. Omar's character is fucking trash. Arnheit and her retarded ass husband? Fam, I couldn't give two fucks about those characters. What was even the point of their character? characters to show how Arnheit and her husband got captured and became slaves because I couldn't give two fucks about that. Shorty ass was dead ass there to pad out the show. It ain't like she was the slave that could work for her freedom. Her ass had to stay there forever watching draws and shit and getting fucked by this old ass wrinkly dude. Her ass even ended up dying from getting beat up by that old ass wrinkly dude, which is a smack in the face to anyone who wasted their goddamn time on them three episodes on her and her husband. Look, Arnheit was an a bad character. She was just irrelevant as fuck. She damn near felt like a filler character to be honest. Had they fleshed her and her husband out in one episode, then I wouldn't even be bitching right now. But instead they turned that shit into a whole storyline and for what? Just to have Thorfinn and Anar feel bad for her when she eventually dies? Because besides Thorfinn and Anar feeling bad for her dying, Arnheim and her husband didn't really mean 
shit to the overall story. You can say Arn High's story showcased how fucked up it is to be a slave, but we're already getting that from Thorfinn and Anar. There's no need for a three plus episode storyline for her. One episode would have been fine. All in all, Arn High and her husband was just whatever, a waste of fucking time. Now, when it comes to Askeladd and Thorkell, they have very little screen time this season, but I would say the time they did have on screen was good. Askeladd played a huge role in Thorfinn's development, and Thorkell made a very clear yet accurate statement to Canoe about not being able to avoid war if he tried. That pretty much is impossible to get what you want by just using the peace route. And what's so fucked up about this is that out of all people, Thorkell is the one saying this shit. You know you have a real flawed way of thinking when Thorkell of all niggas is calling you out and he's actually right. And since I'm on the topic of Canute, let's really talk about King Canute's character in season two. Now, when it comes to Canute's character in season two, he's actually really good at first, but it gets to a point with this character where he starts doing illogical shit, such as him ordering his man to be killed after they tried to collect people and resources off of a land that they won in the war. Like, why would you understand necessarily kill your man for doing something they were supposed to do. It's natural to take people and resources from a land that you've won and selling or using those resources to your benefit. And what makes this action even more stupid on Canoe's part is that throughout the series, this motherfucker is talking about the value of manpower and how having an army is so important to enforcing law and order, yet this motherfucker is unnecessarily killing men for doing shit they were supposed to do. Like he's literally wasting men for dumbass reasons. Oh yeah, another thing that makes Canoe look fucking stupid for unnecessarily killing his men is later on in the season he starts bitching about not having enough money to hold his army in England. Yet this motherfucker unnecessarily killed his man earlier in the season for trying to collect people and resources to sell for money. And now that Canute needs the money really bad to hold his army in England, guess what he has to do to get that money? The same shit he unnecessarily killed his man for. But except this time, it's even worse worse. People actually ended up dying this time. And also, let's talk about King Canute killing his brother. What was the point of him doing that if he and his brother had a great relationship? Canute's brother even helped him with wars by lending Canute some of his men. Yet, Canute wants to kill his brother because he doesn't want to take any risk of someone going against him? What risk? You and your brother never had any issues. How do you kill your brother without at least talking to him about your goals and how you and him could team up to enforce your ideals of peace to other countries. The story has shown Canute's brother to be very supportive of him, so it makes zero sense for Canute to not at least talk to his brother about the idea of teaming up, and it makes zero sense for Canute to see his brother as a threat in the first place. And ever since Canute killed his brother for no logical reason, Canute has been stressing the fuck out about not having enough money to hold his army in England, not having enough manpower, the people of England not fucking with him, which which puts an even bigger target on Canute's back and now he has to go raid other people's farms which leads him to killing a shit ton of innocent people, something Canute did not want to do at one point and all of this could have been avoided if he just talked to his brother about teaming up or forming alliances with other kings. Yeah, it would be risky but at the same time it would be risky doing it all by yourself. Canute trying to control everything by himself forces him to go against what he wanted to do as a king in the first place which was to create a place where people won't have to suffer. Canute killing his brother for no reason, targeting Kettle's farm to colonize and then setting up Kettle and his son to make the colonization seem justified. It was after these moments where I realized the Arthur was desperately trying to turn Canute into a villain when he didn't need to be. And the conclusion to his storyline where he pretty much gets talk no jutsu into leaving not only Kettle's farm alone, but everyone else's farm alone was a huge dun to dun moment for Canute's character because as a viewer, you start to realize that Canute killed his loving brother and a shit ton of innocent men for no reason. Overall, when it comes to Canute's character, I found him to be a huge disappointment. He started off good, but later in the season, he started doing a lot of shit that made no sense, which made it really hard for me to fuck with his character. Now, the only characters I really feel the need to address for the rest of this video is Kettle, Swerve Kale, and Snake. Kettle is an overall cool character that seems to want to do shit the 
right way. And I like how the show doesn't just bottle him into that good guy role. We get to actually see the flaws of his character and how he struggles to deal with them. And his actions were fairly understandable, as fucked up as they were. I would even go as far as to say that Kettle was the most realistic character in the show. He felt the most human, if that makes any sense. But all in all, Kettle is a solid character and I fuck with him. Snake is a very interesting dude. He's pretty much an aloof badass who isn't all the way one dimensional. He has just enough depth to his character to where I can't call him a one dimensional character. He has his funny moments here and there while also having a hand in Thorfinn's development. He also has the same dub voice actor as Captain Yami from Black Clover, which fits his character really well because Snake is pretty much the Captain Yami of Vinland Saga. And I think Captain Yami from Black Clover is a dope character. So that also played a hand to me like in Snake's character. It was kind of like a bonus, but Snake overall is a great character, easily top three in the show. And last but not least, Swerve Kale. Swerve Kale might deadass be the MVP of this show, to be honest. This guy was looking out for Anar and Thorfinn like crazy. If it wasn't for him, Thorfinn and Anar wouldn't have got their slave work done. And to be honest, Anar and Thorfinn would have probably been dead because Snake's man and Thorfinn and Anar was damn near finna go to war over getting a horse to finish their work. And Snake's man was just looking for any reason to kill Thorfinn and Anar, so Swerve Kale came in the clutch. On top of that, Swerve Kale is a respectable dude with the way he be working on that farm at his age. He's also one of those grumpy old dudes who come off like a dick, but deep down inside, he's a really nice dude. He's not the deepest character in the show, but the way he looks out for Thorfinn and Anar despite them being slaves is some highly respectable shit. Also, him and Snake have a funny ass relationship, which is a plus. But that just about covers all the major characters in Vinland Saga season two. Like I said, there's about five characters in the entire season that I really like. Those characters being Askeladd, King Swain, Snake, Kettle, and Swerve Kale. The rest of the characters in the show are either shallow, trash, or uninteresting. But that's about all I have to say about Vinland Saga season two. Overall, it was a mid season. If I had to give it a Grade, I'll give it a C plus. I will never go back to watch this show again. It was too goddamn boring. It has some great moments here and there with some cool, well-written characters. Thorfinn's development was great, but he was still boring and corny as fuck. Canoe's character pretty much got ruined with his illogical way of thinking, and the way he got talked no jutsu by Thorfinn, despite being in the right, was fucking crazy to me. He pretty much ruined the ending of Vinland Saga season two. And yes, I know the people of England forgave Canoe and accepted him as king because Canoe canceled the farm raise and called back his man for controlling them, but that doesn't take away from the ending being corny as fuck. As for Anar, he's a bitch, and to be honest, I have zero interest in seeing Thorfinn bootlicking his way to paradise. Y'all can sit there and watch that sick shit when it gets animated. I'm not. And last question before I leave this video, are we all cool with Talk No Jusu now? Because I could have sworn when Naruto was doing it, everybody was shitting on Kishimoto for it. But when Vinland Saga does it, in the same exact corny way, they get praise for it? Like, what the f Are y'all just moving the goalpost whenever the f y'all feel like it? You know what, man? I'm not even finna bother. If you like the video, nah, what the f am I saying? Of course y'all not gonna like this video. Y'all finna dislike bomb the f out of this shit. Oh well, engagement is engagement. I get paid either way. <laughs>